Well, and while you're trying to do that, just so we don't bump into the other time slot, what I found Shane because when I was looking for a new mower, you know, I was looking at 36 inch standards, and he's got some great videos. <coughs> excuse me, on a uh, to Gravely Pro Stamps, right? It is. It's a 2015 Gravely Pro Stance 36. Yeah, it was beautiful, and he did tons of good videos on them. But like the videos. They went to, um, you know, the middle of summer and then they just stopped. And I found him like, you know, six or seven months after he stopped. And, you know, when somebody's on YouTube and they just stop making videos, you're always like, oh, man, where did he go? These videos are so good. Did he die? Is he still a lot? So I reached <laughs> out to Shane and, you know, the topic of this was dealing with disaster. So he clued me in and basically what happened, and I really appreciate him talking about this because this is the hardest stuff to talk about, is that, uh, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Shane, but you got a lot of work and to finish that work, you were relying on a helper who essentially bailed on you right about the time you stopped making those videos and you went through a real rough patch where you were trying to, you know, basically keep a sinking ship afloat because you had too much work and no help that it bailed on you. Is that right? That's correct. Yes. Uh, so I had been working with uh, a guy for the, the whole previous last season and uh, we ended the season very well and he understood it was, you know, a seasonal position. And so uh, he got a job and, you know, during the winter and we stayed connected and it was up until the last maybe a few weeks before spring had actually started last season. And I had, I, talked to him just a few weeks before and he was ready to go and come come you know spring come the end of March early April I, I gave him a call and he wouldn't pick up any of my phone calls no social I had him on Facebook no social media uh, wouldn't wouldn't connect with voicemails I mean I and you know I blew up every single aspect of you know the internet that I knew and he just wasn't professional enough to tell me what was going on. And I really relied on him. He was, I, I taught him, you know, everything that I knew. So he was very efficient and my world kind of just shattered. I had uh, right around 90, 90 contracts on paper, uh, you know, and I start the week and I, uh, I just couldn't get a hold of him. And he was just ready to go a few weeks earlier. He, you know, he was supposedly going to put his two weeks in and everything was good to go. And I, you know, was naive enough to think that that was good enough. And, and so work day came and never heard from him. And I, I had a, a very hard time trying to employ on, um, on Craigslist. That's primarily what I use as a platform. I mean, for most of my business and for, for hiring, uh, help. So um, I tried to, to hire a, a few guys during that first couple weeks of the of the spring where, you know, recurring lawn maintenance actually started. And uh, a couple guys showed up in like two weeks. I mean, I had an unbelievable amount of uh, turnover. I mean, no call, no show. And it was very hard to deal with. I kind of just had to uh, give, give all... <laughs> 40% of those contracts away to, to another guy that I knew. And I kind of just put everything on the back burner and, and did everything that I could to take care of, of the jobs. And yeah, it was rough. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like it's a real tough position to be in. And it's, you know, that's one of the things that I see from people who have grown past solo operations as an employees are their biggest headache. So, you know, we only got a couple minutes left. So I wanted to, to ask, do you have either like a best lesson that you've learned from that or a best practice moving forward that, you know, you say from now on, I'm going to do this or, you know, to try and eliminate it. Like if there was just one takeaway from that tough situation, what would you say it would be? Well, it really just boils down to being prepared. Um, so preparing for the landscape season is, is vital. Um, as far as the employees are, are concerned, I feel that doing interviews, um, you know, person to person interviews, meeting at like a local Starbucks or, you know, somewhere where you guys can meet face to face um, prior to actually getting someone out in the field. I mean, there's a lot of responsibility there and, and you just don't realize that, that people uh, need 
more incentive and and so the interview process is kind of a big deal for me i feel like when you're hiring you need to you need to get out there and interview them and um that's more incentive for them to actually show up on the work day so i mean as far as that's concerned um you're just prepping uh making sure that you know you have a bunch of bunch of people that you can call a list a list of guys you know that that can be helpers or you know potential uh you know assets uh crew leaders i mean whatever whatever you want and um so so i've i've prepared pretty well with with ads and just kind of getting a bunch of different contacts uh for for you know hiring come come work day and uh definitely got to be positive life is about positive philosophy so uh you know you gotta be positive when you know business declines or you know when winter hits and it's kind of it, being a seasonal business owner like i am it's it's rough in the winter so just it's all about prep i mean just preparing your mowers for everything preparing your mind for everything um and, and staying positive and it's, it sounds like it almost goes back to that uh, that age old thing and not putting all your eggs in one basket. You know, if you've just got the the one employee. Yeah, well, I know I'm good. I mean, I, I know what I can handle now. I've I've tested my limits, and and so with that in mind, uh, we've got that, and just just gonna gonna move forward. I've got some different ideas for this season, and. Uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll do fine. It's, it's definitely an experience. Uh, it's a learning curve. I mean, no one's, no one's going to be successful right off the bat. And I've only been doing it a few years. So, um, kind of just stay positive, move forward and love what you do, which, which is, you know, what, what it, makes, like. it makes a big difference. Makes it a lot easier. Well, if somebody wants to go check out your videos, like I said, he's got a ton on a 36 gravely pro stance. Uh, so if you're interested in that mower, he's got some other good videos up there. Denver L Labor or Landscape comes first. Which one is it? Denver Landscape and Labor Services. Denver Landscape and Labor Services is your YouTube. Um, were you still planning on starting to do more videos for that once the season kicks up? I am. I might even do a video today. So, so I'm hoping to put out a ton of video content. All of that video content is very, uh, you know, in the, it was in the beginning stages of, of having everything and I really couldn't, I still can't edit, but, um, I've definitely got a lot to show as far as, uh, you know, work in the field and, and videos. And I've got a lot to, to help everyone. And I hope to put out a ton of content this season. Uh, so let's just look forward, forward to that. And yeah, Very it's going to cool. be exciting. I All hope right. everyone has a wonderful Sorry season. Technical difficulties. We'll, we'll, we'll work those out next time so you get more time on. But thanks so much for having us on, Shane.